Today, we become legends. Have you ever wondered what the strongest Norse team would be for Conquest? Yeah, me neither, but we're going to do it anyway, so buckle up, buckaroos. The goal here is to create the strongest team based on the current meta for Conquest using gods from only one pantheon at once. Obviously, we're looking for top meta gods for each of the five roles. We don't want to end up with Kumba ADC, as funny as that would be. And we're looking for synergy where we can, though with a limited god pool to choose from in a lot of these pantheons, synergy isn't always going to be possible. There are currently 15 pantheons in Smite, however, Yoruba, Voodoo, Slavic, Polynesian, Great Old Ones, Arthurian, and Celtic don't even have 5 gods to choose from, so we won't be covering those. That leaves us with just 8 pantheons to cover. Chinese, Egyptian, Greek, Hindu, Japanese, Mayan, Norse, and Roman. We'll decipher the best team for each of these pantheons, and just for fun at the end, I'll pit each of these teams against each other in a tournament format to see which pantheon has the overall best team for Conquest. But let's jump into this with alphabetical order with the best Chinese team. The Chinese pantheon consists of Ao Kuang, Chang'e, Daji, Erlang Shen, Guan Yu, Hebo, Huyi, Jingwei, Bulan, Neja, Nuwa, Sun Wukong, Jingchen, and Zhongkui. So starting off in duo lane, we've got two good ADC choices here, and a few decent supports too. For ADC, it's either Jingwei or Huyi, and I think I rate Jingwei a little higher here. And for support, it has to be Jingchen. There's the option of one of the warriors, like Guan Yu, Mulan, or Erlang, but I think Jingchen will serve as better for the support role here. For jungle, we're looking at a few viable picks here. Daji, Erlang Shen, Hebo, Ao Kuang, Neja, and even Mulan could make good junglers for us. It's tough to argue who's stronger right now between Erlang, Hebo, and Ao Kuang. They're all pretty good, but I think I'll go with Erlang Shen here. And the reason for that is that we want Hebo in mid. I prefer Hebo to the other options of Nuwa, Chang'e, or Zhongkui in the current meta, and he fills up a nice spot of burst damage for the team. And finally, we have Solo Lane, which hands down has to go to Wukong. There's a lot of viable Chinese solos like Guan, Mulan, Zhong, Jingchen if we didn't already use him for support, but Wukong is the strongest of these picks right now for sure. So that's our Chinese team. Jingchen Jingwei duo lane, Hebo mid, Erlang Shen jungle, and Wukong solo. Pretty strong and a well-rounded team overall, but can he be beaten? Next up we have the Egyptian team. Once again we have 14 gods here. Anher, Anubis, Bastet, Geb, Horus, Isis, Kepri, Neith, Osiris, Ra, Serket, Set, Sobek, and Thoth. So for our duo lane, there's only really two picks for ADC, Anher and Neith. They're roughly equal in my view, so I'll choose Anher because I like him more. For supports, there's actually a lot of good ones from Egypt. Geb, Horus, Kepri, Sobek, and even Serket can all support really well, and it depends on the playstyle you're looking for. However, Horus sees the most successful player in the meta right now, so we'll choose him. He also pairs nicely with our Anher for an aggressive early game duo lane. For jungle, we pretty much just have Sir Ket. Bastet exists but is terrible, and Set is decent but not on the level of Sir Ket in my opinion. In the mid lane, we're looking at Isis, Anubis, or Ra. We could go for Neath as well, but with a physical ADC and a physical support, we don't really have room for a physical in mid. So I'd say Ra is the strongest pick of these three right now, so he's our mid. And finally, our Egyptian solo laner. The options here are Sobek, Osiris, and Set. And while I think Osiris and Set are potentially a little better than Sobek, I think Sobek is better for our comp because we have a physical support and it's nice to have that extra magical in solo. So there we have it, the Egyptian roster. Anher Horus duo lane, Serket jungle with Ra mid and Sobek solo. Moving on to the largest pantheon in Smite by a good margin, we have the Greeks, consisting of 20 gods. There should be some good choices for this one. Achilles, Aphrodite, Apollo, Arachne, Ares, Artemis, Athena, yes there are 7 gods beginning with A in this pantheon, Cerberus, Chiron, Kronos, Hades, Hera, Medusa, Nemesis, Nike, Persephone, Poseidon, Scylla, Thanatos, and Zeus. So let's create our Greek duo lane first. Apollo, Artemis, Chiron, Kronos, and Medusa are all good ADC options, and I think Kronos is going to be our go-to here. The meta right now is still favouring magical ADCs and the traditional hunter options from the Greek pantheon are all decent but not great. For support, there's only one real choice here and that's Athena. There are other options like Ares or Cerberus, but Athena is just a stronger pick for support right now than these two, and if anything Cerberus would make a better solo laner. For our Greek jungler, we're looking at Achilles, Arachne, Nemesis, or Thanatos. And if you've been following the meta recently, you know it has to be Nemesis. She's the strongest pick out of these options by far, and also has some decent synergy with Athena Taunt. For mid, we have a lot of options here. 
Aphrodite, Hera, Persephone, Poseidon, Scylla, Zeus, and you could even flex Medusa or Chiron into mid since we have a magical ADC. And for synergy reasons I'd love to do that, but you can't pass up having Persephone as your mid lane. I have to go with her, she's simply the strongest pick here by a decent margin. And finally our solo laner. Not a ton of strong options here, we're mostly looking at Achilles, Cerberus or Nike, but we definitely can't pick Cerberus or our team only has one physical, so I think I'll go with Achilles. After the Nike nurse and introduction of Sunder, I don't think she's that strong anymore, so Achilles it is. Completing our Greek team of Kronos, Athena, Dualin, Nemesis Jungle, Persephone Mid and Achilles Solo. This one is a strong contender for sure and has two of the first pick banned gods in the meta right now in Mid and Jungle, which is very strong. Moving on to Hindu, which has far less choice at only 8 gods. Agni, Bakasura, Ganesha, Kali, Kumakana, Rama, Ravan and Vamana. So this one isn't really that hard to choose because for a few of the roles there's only one viable choice. ADC is Rama, he's the only one. Support is a choice between Ganesha and Kumba, which I think Kumba is the better pick right now by just a little bit. Jungler is either Bakasura, Kali or Raven. Baka is definitely stronger right now because of the AA jungle meta in my opinion. Agni is the only viable mid here so that's not hard and Vamana is pretty much the only viable solo so once again not difficult. That's just how it be when you need 5 gods and only have 8 to choose from but to be honest this is a very solid team overall given the lack of choice. Rama Kumba duo lane, Bakasura jungle, Agni mid and Vamana solo. Two top picks and the others are still decent for sure. Speaking of small pantheons, the smallest one we'll cover today is Japanese, which only has 7 gods in total so this one is going to be difficult, or easy I guess since there's only really one option to choose from for a lot of these. The Japanese pantheon consists of Amaterasu, Hachiman, Izanami, Kuzumbo, Raijin, Susano, and Tsukuyomi. So leave your just put Tsukuyomi in every roll xddd comments down below and let's get into this. So for ADC we have Hachi or Izanami. Hachiman is just a better choice here. Supports, this could be either Amaterasu or Kuzumbo, but I think I'll go with the Guardian pick here, so Kuzumbo it is. For jungle, we have either Susano or Sukuyomi. This isn't a difficult decision. Susano is definitely strong, but Suku is broken right now, so we have to choose him. Raijin is the only choice for mid, and we'll round it out with an Amaterasu solo. So despite having only 7 gods, this team does pretty well. Ama is a top 3 solo laner, Suku is the best god in the game right now, and the rest of the team holds up decently well. But let's see how it fares compared to the second smallest pantheon we'll cover today, the Mayans. Consisting of AMC, Apwash, Awilix, Kabraken, Kamazots, Chak, Humbats, Kukulkan and Jibalanke. This is where it gets a bit messy. For ADC we have AMC or Jibalanke, which isn't too bad. I think Xbal is the stronger pick right now so we'll go with him. For support though, our only real option here is Kabraken. This is far from ideal, but can somewhat work into specific comps from the enemy team, but it's all we have so we have to choose him. For jungle we have some good selection however, there's a disproportionate amount of assassins in the Mayan pantheon and we have Awilix, Kamazots and Honbats as decent choices here. All three are pretty good, but I think I'll go with Honbats here. With a Kabraken support you lack a bit of strong AoE engage potential and Honbats ult can cover that aspect for the team. For mid, it's Kukulkan for sure, Apwash is way weaker and the rest are not viable mid laners outside of AMC who we can't really choose because we have a physical ADZ and jungler so we can't fit in a physical mid, so Kukulkan it is. And finally for solo we can choose Kama or Chak. Kama is simply the stronger pick so we'll go with him. So that's our Mayan team. Expel Kabrak and Dualin, Hunbat's jungle, Kuku mid and Kama solo. Not that bad all things considered but lacking a bit in the support department. Okay, so we're done with the tiny pantheons now and back to a much larger one, that being the Norse pantheon, one of my favourites. We've got 15 Norse boys as of right now, and interestingly they start at F in alphabetical order. Fafnir, Fenrir, Freya, Hymdalir, Hel, Jormungandr, Loki, Odin, Ratatoska, Skadi, Sol, Thor, Tyr, Ulla and Ymir make up this pantheon. The ADC role in this pantheon team is stacked. We have Freya, Heimdallia, Skadi, Sol and Ulla all in this pantheon. Freya, Haim, Sol and Ulla are all top meta ADCs right now and it's a tough choice between Haim and Freya, but I'm going to go with Freya mostly because I have a plan for a physical mid laner down the line that means having a magical ADC is very beneficial. For support we have Fafnir, Yorm and Ymir, also kind of Odin and Tyr but not really. Not the best options here, but I think I'll go with Fafnir since he's a solid pick and also has synergy with the double ADC comp I'm planning out here. For junglers, it has to be Thor. The other options are Odin, Rat or Loki, which just don't compare to Thor's prowess in the meta right now. And finally, we get to that mid lane spot I've been teasing, where I'm going with Ulla. 
Believe it or not, the Norse Pantheon lacks any good mid lane mages outside of maybe Sol or Hell, but I think it's far better to chuck a magical ADC in duo lane and Ula in mid, so that's what we're going for. And finally, our Norse solo laner, we can go with Yorm, Odin or Tia here, plus a few others but they're not ideal. I think that Yorm is good for this team though. He brings a lot of disruption and allows Thor to follow up engage with Anvil of Dawn after his ultimate very effectively and doesn't really lose any solo lane matchups. So that's our Norse team. Freya, Fafnir duo lane, Thor as jungle, Ula mid and Yorm solo. This one is looking very promising if you ask me. Three top meta picks and a solid solo and support too with tons of early game prowess. But before we stack these teams up against each other, we have one more pantheon to cover, that being Roman, consisting of 11 gods. Bacchus, Bologna, Cupid, Discordia, Hercules, Janus, Mercury, Nox, Sylvanas, Terra and Vulcan. So for ADC there's only really one option, that being Cupid. He's decent after the buff so we're not too sad about this one. Supporting that Cupid though will have Hercules. Other options like Terra or Sylvanas are solid but Hercules is the better pick for the meta right now. Jungle? Mercury is the only viable jungler here really. For mid we have a few though. Discordia, Janus, Nox and Vulcan can all work in mid. I think overall Discordia is the strongest pick here despite Janus having some synergy with Herc and Merc. And finally our solo laner for the Roman Pantheon is Bologna. A Guardian solo like Terra would make some sense since we have a physical support but I just prefer Bologna here. Discordia should be able to put out enough magical damage on this team on her own. So that's Cupid Hercules duo, Discordia mid, Mercury jungle and Bologna solo. An overall decent team with solid picks in every single role but nothing truly exceptional. So let's see how these teams stack up to each other and determine the best one. Since we have 8 pantheons we can do a simple bracket elimination style thing with these with 3 rounds. So Chinese fights Egyptian, that's Jingwei, Jingchen, Erlang, Hebo and Wukong versus Anhe, Horus, Set, Ra and Sobek. I think overall Chinese has the better picks here, especially in mid and duo so I'm going to give the W to the Chinese boys. Bracket 2 is Greek versus Hindu, 20 gods versus 8 which is interesting but how do they stack up? This is Kronos, Athena, Nemesis, Persephone and Achilles versus Rama, Kumba, Bakasura, Agni and Vamana. Surprisingly close given the difference in god pool size but I gotta give this one to the Greeks. They have a weaker duo lane in my opinion but stronger everywhere else and also have that insane mid jungle combo with Nemesis Persephone. Moving on to bracket 3 we have two smaller pantheons battling it out, Japanese versus Mayan. That's Hachiman, Kuzumbo, Sukuyomi, Raijin and Amaterasu versus Jibalanke, Kabraken, Hunbats, Kukulkan and Kamazos. This is a clean sweep for the Japanese in my opinion. They have stronger picks everywhere except Solo and maybe ADC where they're pretty even. Plus they have Sukuyomi which is a big advantage right now as he's broken as all hell so I'm giving this one to Japan. And our final first round matchup is Norse versus Roman. Two decent sized pantheons but Norse is slightly larger. This matchup consists of Freya, Fafnir, Thor, Ula and Yorm versus Cupid, Hercules, Mercury, Discordia and Bologna. So the Roman team is pretty honest and strong but it just doesn't hold a candle to the Norse squad unfortunately. Having 3 top meta picks plus 2 amazing tanks is very hard to compete with. So moving on to round 2 we have Chinese versus Greek and Japanese versus Norse. Starting off with Chinese vs Greek, we have Jingwei, Jingchen, Erlang, Hebo and Wukong vs Kronos, Athena, Nemesis, Persephone and Achilles. These second round fights are getting pretty close now but I think Greek wins this one out. That mid jungle combo of Persephone and Nem is just so strong and while I think they have slightly weaker side lanes, they should be stronger just based on the core of the two best gods in the game right now for their roles controlling the game from mid and jungle. The second fight of round 2 is Japanese vs Norse, that's Hachiman, Kuzumbo, Tsukuyomi, Raijin and Amaterasu vs Freya, Fafnir, Thor, Ula and Yom. The Japanese have come far with the smallest god pool to choose from but I think Tsukuyomi and Amaterasu can only carry you so far. The rest of the team are just decent, not amazing, whereas pretty much the entire Norse team are A-list picks and those who aren't are still solid. So after round 2 that leaves us with Greek vs Norse in the final, the two largest pantheons, what a surprise. So for a refresher that's Kronos, Athena, Nemesis, Persephone and Achilles vs Freya, Fafnir, Thor, Ula and Yom. These are the two strongest pantheon teams we have to offer so I'm going to weigh this one up carefully to decide a winner. The Norse duo lane should win, mostly by virtue of Freya out trading Kronos for the most part. Mid jungle however probably goes slightly in favour of the Greeks with that insane combo of Persephone and Nemesis, but to be fair Ula Thor can pressure hard early on and potentially shut them out of the game before Nem and Persephone can get online. 
The solo lane matchup doesn't really matter in the grand scheme of things. These two picks are very even, and there's unlikely to be too much solo kill potential either way, and for the team fights, they're about the same as well. So Norse would definitely win the early pressure, and if they can snowball that into a lead for Freya and look to push out objectives with Vapnir's coerce early on, then they could definitely take the game. But the later it goes, the better Persephone, Kronos and Nemesis become, so this is a very close call. It really is the classic of an early game team versus a late game team, and whether or not the early game team can close it out before the late game team can get online. I think overall the Greeks are too slow to survive the Norse onslaught though, especially in duo lane. Some early rotations from the Ulla Thor combo to duo can shut out the Kronos very quickly and get the Freya a big lead, which can snowball into a win especially from Fafnir's objective presence as well as the double ADC comp being able to melt teams and objectives super fast. So Norse is the victor in a very close fight with Greece. What do you guys think? Should I have chosen different picks or do you think the Greeks could hold out to their insane late game comp and still win against the Norse? Let me know down below and I'll catch you guys in another video later on. Have a great day and peace out you nerds.